Hello, welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We are returning with the team of the year. We're here with our midfielders now, but before we get into it, we might as well go through the team that we have so far. So it's Alan Manis in goal, left back Anto Breslin. At right back, we've got Ronan Finn, and then in centre back, we've Pico Lopez and Lee Grace. So we need to find a midfield three. So we're going to pick the three midfielders rather than doing a video on three different midfielders. So we're going to do centre midfielders, probably one anchor and two either box to box midfielders or two attacking midfielders. Gary, I'll let you start off with. I suppose your honourable mentions, and then let us know who you would have in your in your trio. Okay, um, there's quite a few names that I've included in this. Uh, people like Keith Buckley at Bowes, mainstay captain for them. I, I thought Robbie Benson had. Uh, the, I saw him very impressing at Pats. Uh, Sean Murray, maybe in Europe actually more so than in um, in the league. Jordan Flores, not just for the couple of worldies. Um, Gary O'Neill at Shamrock Rovers ha had an excellent season. Um, but I'll come to the three I picked. and Sorry, Dylan Watts as well as one I considered at Rovers. Um, anchor midfielder, Chris Shields. I, I thought um, Chris is a superb player. He keeps getting better and better. Um, he anchors the midfield so well. His distribution is probably something that used to let him down, but he's got so much better at that. And he's such a mainstay in that Dundalk side. And for me, Chris Shields has to be the the anchor midfielder. And then for the two kind of, I suppose, number eights are attacking, well, box-to-box uh, -box midfielders. First one, I think, is fairly obvious. It's Jack Bourne. Uh, Jack Bourne, for me, is the best player in the league. And I don't think I'll get too many arguments on that. He just oozes class. He's passing, not to mind scoring nine goals as well. Um, had a superb season and I, I hope Rovers and I hope the SSE or Tristy Lee can hold on to Jack Bourne because he's someone worth going to watch on his own and the person I have beside him is someone that's really impressed me with Shamrock Rovers is Aaron McAniff I think he's had a huge season for them chipped in with a few goals but also he's passing, he's work rate uh, he's an absolutely crucial player for Stephen Bradley so my midfield three is Chris Shields as the anchor midfielder and Jack Bourne and Aaron McAniff. Yeah, it's not a bad midfield three, is it? Um, Jer, well, go give me some honourable mentions and then obviously into you, into the three that you've, you've gone for and why. Yeah, I'll touch on some honourable mentions that Gary didn't have there. Uh, I have Niall Morahan from Cyber Overs. So I was excellent, fantastic, bright young player. Signed a new contract there as well with the club after the end of the season. So he's got a bright future. Dawson Devoy with Bohemians. I've seen him a couple of times towards the end of the season. That court game when they secured European football, he was one of the best players on the pitch that night. And uh, not because I'm looking for a bit of favouritism, but I include Gary Deegan as well here with Shelburne. Thought he really was very, very impressed this season. And you do look back, he missed a couple of games towards the end of the season. I think he missed that Longford game, didn't he? So, you know, that just shows how important he is. Yeah, so... You just wonder if he was there that day. Shelburne probably could still be a Premier Division club, but we won't go into that. Um, another player as well, honourable mention, if I was to pick just my three best midfielders, I'd have him in, but you need balance. So Dave Cawley with Saigo also misses out as well. Uh, one goal, four assists. Uh, played in 16 league games this season. Five yellow cards, so it's a slight concern, something Neen Buckley will try to get rid of for next season. But... My midfield, uh, again, anchor. I'm going to go with Chris Shields. He's just won me over the last couple of weeks with uh, Dundas extended season in Europe. I thought he was fantastic. He's now, I think, in the top 10 list of all times appearance holders for the club, and he's not even 30 years of age yet. So that's just a phenomenal achievement and a record. And you know, he's still going to have so much to offer that club. And same as Gary as well. My two attacking outlets are the two lads that were in the last Ireland squad, Jack Byrne and Aaron McIniff. Aaron McIniff, three goals and two assists this season. Uh, four goals as well in, in the recent cup games against Finn Harps, both penalties, and got the two goals against Sligo to send him to the final. He only missed one league game this season. And as I touched on as well, he was called up into the recent Ireland squad. And Jack Byrne, really, what more else is there left to say about him? We touched on it on our watch along for the Dundalk Arsenal match. We think we might have seen him play his last game for Shamrock Rovers. I hope not. Uh, he only missed one game this season. That was due to COVID. He's been named player of the year. He's got two caps. He's got two further caps to Ireland to add to the caps he got from last year. Just phenomenal. And, you know, I know we might only end up playing the league for two years, 
But in years to come, when we're having discussion about the greatest player ever to play in our league, he definitely belongs in that conversation. Yeah, so you've gone to the same midfield as Gary then? I have, yeah. Okay. Um, and Paul, you want to go through the same, I suppose, way that Jared did? A couple of honourable honorable mentions, maybe that uh, the lads have missed or, or just didn't include it. Someone may have caught your eye and then obviously who your actual three midfielders would be. Yeah, well, I'd agree with a lot of the honourable men- mentions as well. Uh, Gary Deegan is a good shout. Unfortunately, he did get the red card against Rovers that took him out of the game against Longford, which was hugely important. Um, I'd agree with Gary O'Neill as well. I think when he has come in, he's done a great job. And even when he was at UCD, he was fantastic as well. So he's just gone on from strength to strength going to Rovers. Um, I'll go into my team now, and it's very similar to the two lads. I've gone with Chris Shields as well. We were just talking about him last night. He doesn't look out of place in the European games. He's a fantastic footballer, uh, puts everyone at ease playing alongside him. And uh, he has to be in for me. He was fantastic in the cup final on Sunday as well. And to come back from last year after the uh, after what happened is fantastic for him. Then we go on to Aaron McAniff. Uh, he's a big game player, as he's proven the last few weeks, scoring uh, four goals in those two cup games for Rovers against Harps and uh, Sligo. It's been fantastic, and a lot of Rovers fans love him. He's a big game player, as I mentioned, and always does the job for them. And then onto the best player in the league, Jack Byrne, has to be a shoe in. Nine goals from midfield is fantastic. From playing in the position myself, I wouldn't get near that. I think the closest I've ever got to that is four or five, and he's doing it in a. He's doing it in one of the. He's doing it in a massive league. Um, what else can you say about him? He's the best player in the league. And uh, it's unfortunate that we might, might have seen him play his last game for Rovers. And he won player of the year, so has to be in. So you've all gone for the same midfield, pretty much? Yeah. 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 Okay, well, I, I'm just going to go through some of the some of the honourable mentions and stuff that I've got there. So, um, you know, you've got Greg Sloggeth. Gary Deegan, as you mentioned as well. I think more so with Gary Deegan throughout the start of the season and then obviously just coming back from the break, but he did score important goals as well against big teams and he was good against the bigger teams. But I think towards the end of the season, I'm going to watch Shells live, he fell away a good bit and I think the fans actually started getting frustrated with him towards the end. They were really annoyed with him when he got sent off against Shamrock Rovers as well. He had already picked up a yellow card, so that ruled him out of the long for game anyway. But then he went and got the red card and kind of ruled, effectively ruled us out of the game anyway. It was pretty much a, a, a dead rubber at that point. Anyway, we were going to lose that game. Jordan Flores, um, Gary O'Neill, Ali Cute at um, Waterford as well. 17 appearances and three goals. Uh, he played a lot of the games as well. I thought he was quite good when I seen him in person as well. Graham Burke. You know, it's it's a weird one with Graham Burke because you don't know what position to actually play him in because you could have him as, as a second striker, you could have him as an attacking midfielder. But if you're, I suppose, going off this season, you would want to have him as as a second striker. But um, Keith Ward, uh, in there as an honourable mention, probably didn't play as much um, as the rest. Dylan Watts as well. When he did play, although he was a bit, bit part, he was very effective and helped Rovers win games a lot of times when he came off the bench. You know, he was, was really reliable for Stephen Bradley to be able to call on him, and then he was able to come in and do a job for him. So, I think he deserves big praise, but not ultimately or ultimately in the in the team of the season. I think you have to go as well. The PFAI team of the season, Keith Buckley got in there as well. So, I think he goes a little bit under the radar. He's the driving force behind that Bowles team, and he really rallies the troops. I'm pretty sure he won Player of the Month throughout the season as well. For Bowes, or sorry, for, for the PFAI Player of the Month, he won at least once this season. Um, always solid. I'm actually going to go with him as my anchor midfielder. I know you've gone with Chris Shields, and I can see why. But you look at where Bowes finished and how their season went, and as I mentioned, he's their captain there, he's their driving force. So I'm actually going to go with him as my anchor midfield. And then, yeah, I mean, you could go between a couple there, but I think, and Gary O'Neill as well would kind of hold Buckley close, but I just think he didn't play enough, whether he was out through injury or whatever. He just didn't play enough. And another person who probably would have been in the argument had he not been injured, and it's great to see him back now, is Greg Bolger as well. He would have been there or thereabouts. I think he's a very, very important player for Shamrock Rovers and has been. I think Jack Bird is always going on about 
how much he enjoys playing with him because he makes things simple for him. So again, he's another person, you know, he's a seasoned pro. He's won things everywhere he's went, really, with Cork and, and, and Rovers now as well and other teams, Pats and that he was with. So, you know, I, I, I will go with Buckley as the anchor and then, yeah, um, I, I'll go with Mac and F. You know, you don't get into the Ireland squad if you're not doing something really, really good. I think he goes a little bit under the radar because Jack Byrne gets all the headlines, but Aaron... You know, he just doesn't stop. You speak to all the Rovers fans, they all love him. Um, just because he covers every blade of grass. He also, he takes penalties and stuff like that, so he's reliable when you need him to be. How many goals does he have? Aaron McInniff, I think he's got three goals over the course of the season. Um, yeah, three goals, 17 appearances. And that, I think that, I wrote those a week ago, so he probably has another appearance um, with the cup final and stuff like that. Unfortunately for Rovers, the cup final didn't go their way when Dundalk. That's why I think, He's maybe done this week ago. I don't think Chris Shields maybe gets in that team for some years, but maybe I'm wrong. But I'm gonna go with Keith Buckley just for the overall season that he had with Bowes, and I think it's, I think they deserve a bit more of a mention for finishing second, albeit it was an 18 league game season. But I do think he did deserve a bit more credit than, I suppose, other teams have given them. Chris Shields by far in that position, yes, the best. But if you're talking about performances over the course of this season, then I would go with, uh, with Keith Buckley, Jack Byrne. I mean, what do I have to say that you haven't said about him? Absolutely fantastic player. He's, you know, voted by his fellow peers as the best player in the league for the second season in a row. Comes on. Everyone wants him to play for Ireland. It looks like he's going to go and move somewhere. We don't know where yet, but it looks like he's played his last game in the League of Ireland. Huge loss for the league, I think, because I had mentioned it on the show last night, on the live show, that, you know, people were starting to come and watch because of players like him. And, if maybe COVID hadn't come around, you never know. We maybe could have built the league around him, but it was it was wasn't to be. It seems as though he's played his last game for Rovers, although that hasn't been confirmed. It'd be a huge boost, but I think for his career, I do think he needs to move on to bigger and better things. But you don't know what he's thinking, and I think from what I've read, it seems as though he's just looking for the right move. So I hope he gets in with someone who is a manager that he can play under that doesn't get sacked straight away and then he's kind of back to square one where he's playing in a team that just ho- hoofed the ball and then he doesn't really get noticed because the ball is just kind of going over his head constantly back and forth like a game of tennis or something. But that would be my midfield three anyway. Uh, Keith Buckley, Aaron McAniff and Jack Byrne. So I think unanimously through you guys, uh, it'll be Shields, McAniff and Jack Byrne. So I think we're close enough on the trio. But uh, that's a good, pretty good midfield trio and I don't think many teams would like coming up against that midfield three. So uh, they're the ones to get in as our anchor midfielder, Chris Shields, and then Jack Byrne and Aaron McAniff side by side with Jack pushing on a little bit further and making things happen for our strikers. So let us know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like the video, don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned because we're going to go straight into our wingers and strikers um, who are going to play with this team.